Sunday. It's a weekend. It's a rare one for me. Usually I'm out riding my bike, but um, yeah, today for some reason I just didn't feel like it and kind of made me feel better. The fact that it actually rained so I wouldn't have had to go out for a ride anyhow. So here I am uh, shooting my first vlog, so to speak. So how did this come about? Hmm. So we were having um, a catch up with friends um, a couple of days ago and we were just talking about how the last time we met was almost six months ago and how time kind of flew by. So it kind of got me thinking, maybe time does fly by and I want to kind of look back many years from now to kind of see that it, you know I, I've documented something and the whole idea of the vlog was to document a little bit of the life that I'm going through. So by way of quick introduction, for those who don't actually know me, I'm Charles. I have been in the tech industry for maybe a good 20 years now. Uh, all this time in tech, I've been in multiple roles, uh, from combination of doing services right up to sales, and now I've also transitioned and I'll share with you a little bit more as we go along. But um, yeah, it's been quite a journey, 20 years, started in Australia, and now I'm in Singapore. So for the bulk of the car my career, I've actually been in what we coin as pre-sales or solutions engineering. So if you're just wondering and you're not from the, the industry, what it simply means is um, we are the sales counterpart for selling solutions. So the sales guys sell the solution and we fill in the gaps from a technical perspective. You know, the nuts and bolts and how things kind of piece together. So we work in tandem many ways. So in more recent time, I think the past year and a half, uh, I've changed to a role called customer success. So a little bit more back office. So essentially, I'm now more post-sale. Once the sale has been done, I make sure, or rather my team and myself, we make sure that the customer has a great journey with us moving forward. Having said that, it's, um, it's been pretty rough. Um, I, I think it's not so much the role per se. I think maybe it's just a combination of factors and I'm sure you hear me rant about it as we go along. Um, I hope this is not going to be the last vlog. Uh, I did, you know, me trying it out. But yeah, let's see. Welcome to the room or pseudo studio if you like. So historically, this room has been used for um, all kinds of videos. Uh, during COVID, if you look at some of the past videos on the channel, you will see and you'll notice a lot of familiarities. But over time, it's become sort of like a storeroom if you like. So not much happening and I won't, I won't kind of show you. Maybe at some point I'll show you guys. Uh, yeah, it's a bit in a mess. Uh, of course, my trusty bike at the back. Uh, so this bike, I spend a lot of time on this bike uh, doing indoor training whenever I find time or when the weather permits. Um, so yeah, otherwise this is where a lot of things happen. But since COVID, when we return to work uh, and less work from home, the pseudo home office slash studio has gotten a lot less use. Which brings a great segue to work. Um, I, I think we spoke a little bit about uh, how work has been challenging for me at least um, first challenging because the roles different very different from what I'm used to in the past in the past uh, I was very in that my element you know doing uh, pre-sales work solutions engineering work now because I moved to more of a post sales kind of side of the fence it's a bit of a different uh, feel to it learning the job obviously in itself was challenging but it's not something I, I can't deal with I think um, we're all very familiar you know after a while you get used to working with most uh, new processes what I'm finding challenging is 
dealing with a little bit more of the culture. So with every company, culture is different. Um, obviously, I've worked in an organization where culture has been great and some not so great. But with everything else, you know, you find new ways to ma manage it, so to speak. So one of the things that I'll probably like to share with you guys is how you can manage uh, a toxic work culture or toxic people for that matter. So sometimes while the work is great, <laughs> it can be quite tough when you have to manage uh, difficult people or people who just generally make the culture not very enjoyable. Maybe I'll share a couple of you know, uh, t techniques or tips that has actually worked for me in the past. So what, what do we define by toxic culture? So toxic culture is a bit like you know, putting people under the bus, blaming, finger pointing, or just being rude and unkind to your fellow colleagues. Uh, obviously the list can go on. So one of the first tips I can give anybody, and that's worked great, and I believe it's the first step to anything, it's to disconnect. So when I say disconnect, essentially don't give them the power. So for example, if they're being rude, just walk away. If they send you a nasty email, continue to reply professionally, uh, or, or even if they shout at you, walk away from the situation and tell them, hey, you know what, we, let's not talk now, let's have another discussion when you're a bit calmer. I think the whole intent here is to stop it at its core. Do not engage and just walk away. Whenever somebody's being rude, it doesn't pay to be rude back, so to speak, or you shouldn't bring yourself down to the level where you are rude to the same person. I know it's very hard to kind of say, hey, somebody's being rude at you or blaming you for things that you didn't do. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to just walk away. I understand that, but we have to try. And the second thing is, stop letting it linger around your head. So the term that I kind of like to use is they are actually renting space in your head for, for free, right? It, you keep playing it back over and over and over again. But just really think about it. If somebody said something nasty to you or sent you a nasty email, do, they think, do you think they would be like out there telling everybody that what they just did or celebrating their little victories? The quick answer is that no, they probably just went on with their life anyway. But here you are stuck in your head, just playing back the same statement or the same action over and over and over again. It probably doesn't help, but it really sucks the life out of you. And I mean, sometimes, like I mentioned, it's very, very difficult. But for me, when I find myself doing it, I pretty much just remind myself, hey, you know what? I'm seeing myself doing it now. I'll disconnect and completely distract myself from it and doing something else. So the third advice I have for you, it's obviously um, talking to somebody about it. So you can find a, a confidant or somebody at work that you're very, very close with that you can trust to talk about it. Obviously talking about it helps, you know, we, we blow off steam, we bitch about it, etc., etc. But I'll be very, very cautious as well in terms of sh oversharing and doing too many times. I'm not too sure if you notice, the first time you, you kind of share with somebody else, it feels great. But after a few times, you realize every time you kind of regurgitate that story, it becomes, you could kind of relive that entire moment again. So I, I just don't, it, it's same like my previous point about it playing a, over and over and over again in your head. I just don't think it's great. Um, so usually what I do is I'll tell a friend once or maybe twice at most, and then I'll just move on. Because there's really no point you know, keep playing a negativity in your head when it's only really you that's affected. I think the next tip is more around if everything else fails, you always remember that you have an option to leave. I know the economy is bad, it's hard to get another gig, but you should just kind of keep that at the back of your mind. You don't actually need to live with this. You can always choose a different option while you're at it. Start looking, putting feelers out there and see what's out there in the market. And when the opportunity comes around, leave. Because I always believe saying you either change the person or rather change yourself or change the situation in this case you can change the way you deal with it which is what i've shared in the earlier part or you change the situation or put do not put yourself in that situation for that matter so by changing a situation essentially leaving the job or you know not engaging in conflict or engaging in any of this politics or toxic uh, play and that's one way to do it and my final tip is probably a little unorthodox. Some people might think that it's a bit excessive 
or rather it's gotten a very very bad rap but personally I feel in a difficult market uh, and after all I've seen during COVID and also the massive layoffs that's happened in recent times by tech and everybody else I don't think it's such a bad thing so then the one that I'm actually suggesting is actually quiet quitting quiet quitting's gotten a lot a lot of bad rap but it shouldn't be because I'm not saying that when you quiet quit you don't actually do the job I'm saying that when you quiet quit you do what is required of you but just just that right not anything above and beyond um, you draw boundaries of what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing and I think it's probably better for everyone I mean just as for example there may be jobs that require you to work nine to five five days a week if something comes in over the weekend you can always kind of just push it back and say hey you know what? I'll deal with it on Monday there is no no requirement for you to push the boundaries and do a Saturday Sunday and whatnot right don't deal with anything over the weekend if you don't want to so that's one way to do it do not think of quiet quitting as a as a bad thing I reckon times are gonna continue to be a little bit slow for a time being uh, maybe till the end of the year or maybe early next year who knows Between now and then if you can't find anything else quiet quitting is not a bad option if you ask me so hopefully that's given you a few little pointers how best you can cope I know everybody has different ways and mechanisms to cope and no one size fits all some of those stuff that I shared actually worked for me so I've, I thought it might be just good to share as well.